Hi everyone, welcome to our next lesson. And thank you for the positive feedback and the likes that you guys have uh, displayed on, on the channel so far. Thank you so much. Really, really, really appreciate it. But anyway, let's continue. Right, in this one, we're basically going to do our the, the episode about creating a post. So basically, basically in our view right here, we've got a dashboard post.create. So we're going to be dealing with this right here. Okay, so we're going to install the Blade UI kit. Let me just show you what that is. Okay, let's go to our browser. Right, this is a Laravel Blade UI kit by Dries. And I think if we go to his GitHub repo, his Discord, yeah, you will see Dries Fins. That's the what, the guy that works in Laravel IO, I think. Um, that he actually designed this Blade UI kit. All right. Well, obviously with other contributors around there as well. Okay. So this is the one we'll be dealing with and working with. Okay. So let's get started. So we actually need to install this first. So we're going to go to installation. Before installing a new package, it's always a good idea to clear your config. All right. So let's do that. So PHP artisan. Right. The requirement is PHP 7.3 or higher. I would recommend to go to 8 um, uh, rather now than later. Okay. So let's quickly do this. Let's get started with the installation. Right. So we clear the convict. PHP artisan convict clear. Okay. Convict is cleared. Right. So the next part is composer require blade UI kit. Awesome stuff. Let's do that. So, like I said before, copy and pasting again. <laughs> Composer require a Blade UI kit. So that's busy installing. See you when it's finished. Okay, so now that is all done. Okay, so the next part would be to publish the vendor file. Okay, so let's do that quickly. We're obviously going to add the style and the script text. Just now, now. So let's just publish the vendor folder. So let's go back to our browser right here and see this is the scripts that we're going to add but not to worry about those let's get the convict files right there okay so let's copy that now i'm mostly not gonna do any adjustments to my convict file but it is just there for you guys to basically if you want to edit some functions let me show you where it is under the convict, you will see Blade UI Kit. All right. Now on this, basically, if you want to do make any changes and stuff like that, you can do it right here. All right. So here's our tricks and there's our picker deck. So this is the ones that we're going to use. All right. All good stuff. Okay. The next thing is to add those two script tags. Let's do that. Okay, so let's add our script tag. So let's make this just a little bit bigger. Right, so now we're going to add the script in our head section. So what we're going to do, resources, views, then layouts. Then we want to do that in our app layout. Okay, where's our life away? That's our navigation. Our life away scripts is here. Okay. Let me just leave a comment like Livewire. I think it says speaks for itself, but just and this one is Blade UI Kit. Just like this. And then we add that. Let's go and copy and paste it in. Okay, so we're gonna copy this one. Copy and go to our browser to our <laughs> code editor so we add the bulk sounds true this is in our head section right now let's go to our this is the scripts let me just copy this so let's cut it let's go into our head section this is our head right here and just underneath our life wire see right here this is the styles life wire 
displayed UI kit. Okay, and now we need to add the scripts. Okay, so let's copy this right here. And let's just paste the scripts in like this. Okay, so now we're all done and set up. Okay, so what do we have done now is we edit our Blade UI kit scripts right there. And the styles and the scripts right here. So we all set up for now. Right, so the next part is actually to create our view. So let's go to views, dashboard, post, dot create. Okay, so let's make this smaller and give us some room. Right, so the next thing we can gonna have a title. You guys might remember we we have a title, we have the image, we have the body, all the kind of stuff. Let me show you the in the model. And so we got our cover image right here, we got our title and our body, meta description, uh published ad, featured, author and category. All those kind of stuff we have to deal with that in our view okay so let's please basically right we got our post so basically this is going to change to title title okay let's change this to title this is going to be a title i think i'm going to keep the maximum characters for now put the complete title and title hold title okay input error for title i could have controlled d for all of them but i didn't want to i just wanted to show you guys all of that so the next part is i just copy it down this is going to be a title i just like to name where everything is and this is going to be the body, okay? Body right here, okay? So let's add that Trix editor in there. Okay, so the things that we need for that is we need a label, okay? But let's create a diff first. With, let's just create a diff with the margin top. Margin top, no, or four, okay? And then we want to add that label X object label. Or we can just copy and paste this label like this. Copy paste. Easy peasy. Right, then we change this to basically for the body. All right. And then the next part will basically to add the tricks editor in there. Okay, so how do we do that? Now the since it's a blade syntax, we're going to use the X, and it's actually just simple and uh, not, not like this. X tricks. Just do it again. Tricks. Just like this, we have our editor in there. And the name will basically be body. Okay. Body. And we're not going to do any class. Let's just put a class in there. We're just going to decide in a sec what to put in there. And then we're going to have a value of I'm just thinking about the input sorry now what we do here is we add the styling attribute actually we need instead of the class we need to do the styling and the styling basically all your tailwind styling you put, put between styling tags now in between these we're actually just going to add obviously um Actually, we don't have to, to put anything in between, but I just, let me just, we just want to remember to do the styling because we might need to create a full width with it. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. It's obviously the jet, the error for the body. So 
So let me just copy this and put it in here. So this is basically if there's any error for the body, it will actually just show on here. Right, let's see how it looks like so far. So let's go to the browser. Refresh. As you can see, we have our text editor in there. Very nice. We've got our title. We obviously need some more things. We need our picker day as well. And yeah, let's do that. Actually, you know what? What we can do, we can actually replace this now with the rotation of the Blade UI component kits. It will actually include the CRF fields and everything like that. So let's do that quickly. Right, how it looks like is basically X form, just like this, open and closing X tags. And let's just replace this one. Since we're using the Blade component kits, let's use most of them. Okay. And then we're going to just add an action as well, so which we already have. We can copy this and paste it in here. Okay, like this. And then we can just do has files. All right, like this. I think it says has files, if I remember correctly. All right, and basically has files is basically like ink type. Mm. And type multipart like this part form data or something like this. All right. This is basically if you have files that you want to upload, which we do have, is because we want to do a image as well. All right. So we can delete this. All right. Let me show you in the documentation where this is. Let's go to the to our UI kit. Okay, let's go there. Load UI kit. Okay. And at the bottom under documentation is it forms. Yeah, here's the form. Now basically you give your basic usage. Okay, like only the action, and it will give you the by default uh, post method. This is what it will output. Obviously with the token. And if you put a method in there with put it will actually put the uh, input hidden method of put right there as well. Okay, or the file uploads. Yeah, here is it. The has files right here. We got it there. And it will actually put up that entire multipart form data right there and method of post. Right, all Gucci stuff. So if you want to read more about that, you can just come and read it here. That's why I said this is like an episode on its own. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so now that that is included, let's go back to VS Code. Okay, so we're using the kit right there. Um, the next thing that we're going to have is the input of a file. Um, let, me, let me create a div. Okay, like this. Save this and move it over. Okay, so we've got a div right here, and let's create a label, XJet label, this, paste it in there. This is basically going to say like a cover image, okay, and the title is for, for cover image, okay, and then we're just going to put an input, input file, okay. And that is cover image. Right. Cover image. Now, basically, this is the thumbnail of our post, basically. Right. And then we're just going to add uh, this right here. We can obviously add the span. Okay. We can do this. We can add the span. We can actually say uh, file types. Um, must be GPG, PNG only. Just as an example. Obviously, it can be many, many different more, but I'm just using that as an example. So let's see how this looks like. And I'm just going to add a class here of margin top of four. Okay, so that is our form right there. Let me just, I like to comment my stuff. This is the cover. Image 
just let me find help me find the what I'm looking for actually much much easier right I'm going to remove this all right so we've got our cover image our title our body section so let's see how it looks like all right let's refresh all right so we've got our cover image right there file type png so if we click on it we can obviously go and get the image we've got a title our body good stuff now all we need to do is now we need to add the pick a day okay the schedule okay so let's do that so in our form okay what was the other one pick a day let's choose pick a day all right so we obviously got that in there so we're just gonna do pick a day just like that <laughs> easy peasy let's go to vs code right inside vs code just above the body i think no let's do it underneath the body we're gonna do a div all right let's do it like a div because we actually can use um different instead of everything margin top like this we can actually leave it like this and we can actually create another div with a class of space y or let's say space y six just like this just encapsulating the whole part right here okay like this so every div inside will be spaced nicely okay so we've done that we could have covered the title and this will be basically schedule okay so let's paste the pick a day in here okay I copy that let me go and copy it again copy come on right, pick a day and this will be basically featured uh, published uh, published at Okay, so let's see how it looks like All right this is more or less how it looks like so if you click on it you can actually have a nice little date so let's say we want to publish this post on that date it kind of gives you a nice input field like that very very nice i'm just going to style it a little bit obviously and i'm going to style that as well but so we got our title body next thing we need underneath this is the for the meta description so let's do that so underneath this we're going to need the meta description okay so what we're going to do is we have a div as well okay and we're just going to use the tricks editor again of the top part okay and we're going to just paste it in here okay because yeah why not okay so let me just change this to meta uh, description okay and i'm just gonna obviously do this meta like this right we have our button there that's all good let's go back refresh right meta description obviously this title is not in there so let's do that title as well why the title label just bring it in here label is schedule date schedule date All right and obviously eh. okay let's put it in there okay let's see how it looks like a lot of copy and pasting <laughs> All right so we have our meta description we obviously have our body here I'm just going to give it a minimum height right here and I want to, to scroll on this side okay otherwise if the user types in a lot of information they have to come to the top if they want to choose if it wants to be bold or stuff like that so I'm just going to create a minimum height for this as well let's quickly do that so what we're going to do is overflow come on overflow why scroll and we're just going to give it the height of 96 so let's see if it looks okay so basically what happens now is if the user 
start typing. Let's just start typing some stuff. You see it scrolls on the Y axis, but the users still have the option to actually bold the things. Otherwise, the user have to come, let's say they're at the bottom right here, and they have to come again on top to basically bold the text or italicize the text and stuff like that. Right, so that prevents that from happening. So when they create a post, so that you can just scroll basically on the Y axis. So that's good. It's a tailwind class. So that's all good stuff. All right, so we got our cover image, our title, our body, our scheduled date. Um, yes, so in 13 we've chosen that. And then the meta description, obviously the person can type in here as much as he wants. As you can see, let's say they type in a lot of things like this. You see, they have to come here and then bold again, then go back and type again. That's not a good user experience. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same thing for this, but I'm just going to give it a smaller minimum height. Okay, let's do that. So I'm just going to copy the spot right here and paste it inside our styling right here. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller, um, 42. Let's see how that looks. Yep, 42 is fine. So if we continue, nope, maybe for save, yes. So it did save it. Let's go. Nope, it didn't save it. Okay. Finish. Okay, now it's saved. Okay, it's good. Right, it's just a better user experience. Okay, so we can choose our image. We have our title, we have our body, schedule date, and our meta description. And if we press create, we obviously have the HTML validation happening right there. Okay, let's quickly open up our model, uh, post model. All right, we have we need to pull in a category ID, and obviously our tags as well. So let's do that. So inside our post controller, All right, we need to bring in our tags and our category. Okay, let's do that. So basically we have our open and closing brackets right there and we're just going to do tags like this and then tag all. So basically we bring in all the tags and now this one needs to basically bring in all the categories. Categories and this is also going to be all categories. Uh, oh, not the controller. Okay, so basically like this. Okay, so now we have basically our tags and we have our categories. So if we go inside our create method, now we need to basically give the user an option so to decide which category they want to basically schedule the post under. So just underneath the schedule, we're actually going to do the category. No, no, let's do that above. So when the user, before we actually does the body, let's do the category right here. Okay. Okay, so we create a div. Okay, a div. And then we're obviously going to get a label right there. Let's copy this. Copy this label in here and then we're going to just say categories this is just going to be category id right so we're going to be looking for the category id here and then we're just going to create a select form select okay now and then we're going to have our options Okay, and we're gonna do this one is gonna be character ID. I'm just gonna do the same thing, just copy it over. You can actually just call it category bit and at the back we can just deal with it. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an for each. Okay, for each category. 
remember uh, from the post controller this right here is what we're going to be pulling in for its categories as category okay and then we just obviously gonna copy this one down in there right and then we're just going to say please uh, select like that now inside our options we're just basically going to do a category dot name okay and the value right here will be category id all right let's see if that works all right class error another error class that not found that will obviously be in our post controller as you can see right there now post controllers so don't be afraid of errors we just need to import those two let's do that all right so inside here now post controller we just need to make sure it's imported at the top right here okay and our category as well so let's import so both of them must just be on top line like use app model stack and use app models category okay so let's see if that error goes away it's supposed to go away now right so all good as you can see we can now select a category holiday swimming or fishing you can choose one right there right i'm actually going to just give it some styling to give it a full width right so added some styling basically what you can do is you can basically copy the let me just go show you your input value right here if you go to your resources view uh, vendor components the input right here okay just copy basically the styling of it okay we can do that but i added extra styling obviously because let me just make this smaller as you can see we added a full width or a block and full width and margin top as well so just remember to add paste everything and just add the full width the block and the margin top in as well okay so then we have our category right here so there we could have it so if we choose a category like this right so we have a title category now underneath our schedule right here i'm just going to put the tags let's do that Right, so let's create our tags we've got our meta description underneath this we're going to add our tags now the thing about the tags is we want to actually have a select menu so that you can choose multiple items inside it but in order to do this we're going to need to use alpine.js again in order to just to kind of have the javascript functionality in order to have them next to each other okay so let's do that Okay, so let's create a, a label <clears throat> a label and this one is just going to call it tags and tags you know what will be better because otherwise this page will be full of um, code i'm just going to create a tag component and actually do all of this inside that component Okay, let's do that quickly so basically under components components let's create a new file called tags dot blade dot php right so we're going to do all that kind of coding inside here let me just do that all the coding we're going to do for our tags inside this component okay so in here we basically just going to reference this x tags okay so we're just going to reference you will see why in a second okay because there's going to be a lot of code that we have to type right so let's start with the first one is obviously uh, open and closing div Okay. And 
we obviously want to add the label in there as well so let's do the xj label let's copy it again get label this i'm just going to call it tax without the closing the array right there just leave it tax okay then we're going to do a select okay select on if it's about okay the name will be basically our select mm. no what let's leave the name out of it because we're going to do all of this with alpine stuff so we're going to do x cloak write in an id of select okay and then a clause of width um, cool. And we actually can use that same class that we had for our select option right here. We're just going to copy that whole class as well. Like this. You can delete this one. Right. And then we're going to have our options inside our select. Remember now what we have to do is we have to actually pass our tags as a value to our component. But before we do that, let's just continue and just say add for each. For each uh, tags as a tag. Okay. And then we give it an option. The value will be basically be the tag ID. This part right here will basically be the tag dot name. Okay, and that will be the end for that. Now the thing is, now we're going to create another diff right here. I wonder if you guys might just copy this, because we're not doing really a all-time calls right now. Yeah, this will be too much to type out, so I'll just paste it in for you. Right, I, if you can see, right, as you can see, we added a style of X cloak and a whole bunch of code right here. Right here. And then some script tags with some JavaScript as well. Now, this I cannot take credit for. I will quickly show you where this comes from. In our browser, we're just going to do a multi select um alpine js i think dot js yeah it's this one right here with the tailwind component right it's by this creator now the thing about this is it's i've modified quite a lot of code okay so it's more or less more or less this but not really okay so if you're going to go to show code you can see it right here but there is some modifications that i've done so you can obviously download it from github okay so this right here you can yeah let me just say more or less but it is so if we select that item it's more or less the same thing it is the same thing but with a little bit more modifications let's put it like that i don't want to get into trouble okay so if you can see if we do there's just this select keyword right there so we obviously only have the one and then yes okay let's go on so basically in order to pass this variable to this component we need under the create method we actually have to in the tags component we just create that tags and just pass the variable like this okay inside that component you can obviously down this from github you can modify and use it out if you want right and let me just go to our view again and i'm gonna make the image not required for now 
the title did I put required yes I put required let me just leave the required for now I just want to see what values we get inside our store method let's just return because we're going to be dealing with this in the next lesson so let's return the request right let's just see what returns okay so let's go to our browser right here let's refresh okay so let's create and see what returns okay so it picks up the title the category id the body the published ad and the tags in the meta description so let's go back some tags create as you can see it created for us like that well good stuff so let's create just a couple of more tags just let's create um good go go let's say good just one more Life. Just like that life. Okay, so let's go to our post and create. Okay, so let we can select the character is swimming and select okay, some tags. That's good. Just handle a little bit of the troubles around there. So some tags good and live okay so we've chosen that let's create as you can see it create our tags right there seven nine and three we're obviously going to do some methods at the back in order to store them correctly but no stress we're going to do that obviously when we get to the store method right so we've got our title so if we type in something yep and it's swimming and fishing and something in the body and just let's just select a date just to make sure everything comes through create as you can see a body meta description tag the, the title is in there and all is good all right thank you guys for watching thank you for making this far. obviously in the next episode we're going to be dealing actually with creating the post and all that kind of stuff so yes all right i hope you guys learned a lot it makes it worth if somebody actually learns something from the videos and if you didn't learn anything i think i'm not doing my job correctly but i am gonna try my best to make sure that we all learn something in the day yes. oh, that's all okay all right thank you guys and please like the video if you like it dislike it if you didn't like it give it a thumbs up or thumbs down doesn't matter positive or negative feedback is always appreciated and yes i'll upload this to github and see you guys in the next episode goodbye